Our program has three proposed actions. I say proposed because no, nothing has been decided or nothing has been uh, determined. The first uh, proposed action is the uh, relocating some of the Marines from Okinawa to Guam. Second is building a pier in Guam's Upper Harbor to support transit in the U.S. Navy nuclear power aircraft carriers. And the third proposed action is to establish an Army Air and Missile Defense Task Force. These actions are referred to as the Guam and the CNMI military relocation. Slide like this. The primary purpose of this proposed action is to position U.S. military forces not only to meet international agreements and treaty obligations, but also to support U.S. national security requirements out here in the Western Pacific. These international commitments were reaffirmed on February 17, 2009, when the U.S. Secretary of State and the Japanese Foreign Minister signed the Guam International Agreement. The uh, Japanese Diet then, on, on February 13, 2009, approved the International Agreement and it was subsequently translated to the U.S. Congress. So when, when, when people ask me if this is really going to happen, I always say that this, are, this is uh, an agreement between two countries. Uh, sorry. This all began back in 2003 when the U.S. engaged the Japanese in a series of consultations, uh, now formerly known as the Defense Posture Review Initiative, or DPRI. And the goal is to transform the alliance into, in a, in a strategic level, uh, with particular attention to the posture of U.S. and Japanese forces in the Pacific. As you can see in this slide, there are many parts to this DPRI. In fact, there are 19 agreed implementation plans, or AIPs. Among other things, jets from the carrier will be relocated from Atsugi, near Tokyo, to Iwakuni, near Hiroshima. Another key point is relocating the Marine Corps Air Station for Tenma from south of Okinawa to a replacement facility up north. In a force, we are relocating about half of the Marines from Okinawa to Guam. Slide. So why Guam? You know, it is through careful analysis of assets, requirements, capabilities, and strategic location that the United States determined Guam as the preferred location for relocating the Marines from Okinawa. You know, countries like Korea, uh, even here in the Philippines, uh, Singapore and Australia, while strategically located, do not provide us the freedom of action to base and train freely, or to operate or respond to contingencies without any restrictions. We also look at Hawaii, the West Coast, and Alaska. You know, while U.S. soil, the great distance preclude us from responding to trouble spots here in the region. It would take a ship from San Diego traveling at 16 knots, which is the road normal speed, 16 days to get to Taiwan. From Hawaii, 12 days. From Guam, 4 or 5 days. And it would take a C-17 cargo plane 13 hours to fly from the west coast to Taiwan. From Hawaii, almost 8 hours. From Guam, 3 hours and 20 minutes. So the strategic location for Guam cannot be overseas. 
Next one. There are nine Malays permanently assigned to Guam today. Three of them work for me. By 2014, their number will grow to about 8,500 active duty and about 9,000 dependents. No change in the Coast Guard numbers and slight increases in the Navy and Air Force numbers. For the Army, the planning figure we were given is about 1,600. But the big takeaway from this slide is at the bottom. An increase from about 16,000 active duty and dependents to about 36,000 by 2014. Next slide. I will spend a little bit more time on the uh, marine uh, relocation because they have the biggest piece of the pie. For the marine relocation, we will be constructing all the required infrastructure and training facilities necessary to establish a Marine Corps base of operations in Guam. Now, the Marine requirements can be grouped into four functional components. To the left is the main cantonment area, and the preferred location for, for that is at NCTS, the Naval Computer and Telecommunication Station, up in Finnegan. Another component is waterfront operations. That's going to be down in Upper Harbor. The aviation functions will be co-located at Anderson Air Force Base to the north, and of course, training facilities to the east in Anderson South. Slide, please. So we're essentially building a city for about 20,000 people. Carefully designed so we will minimize the impact of the community. We will use the concept of live where you work and always add walk where you live. So the goal is to put up north the headquarters building, administrative building, maintenance and support barracks and galleries. To the south will be the family houses, daycare centers, and schools. We'll be building five schools, one high school, two middle schools, and three elementary schools. And then in the middle will be the community support facilities, medical clinic, PS, counselor, recreation centers. And the base will be green. We will be using the green uh, building standard rating, leadership in energy and environmental design, which is the standard for environmentally uh, sustainable construction. Next slide. More marines mean more training in the region. And that means more ships coming to Guam. When I first, as an officer, when I first arrived in Guam in 1971, the base looked like a ghost town. There was this brack, the base realignment and closure commission and decided to take away most of the function of the base. And so today, they have not been upgraded. So the increase in traffic, we will need to upgrade the waterfront capabilities 